Welcome to this video giving you information about conservative plate boundaries. Today, this video is going to focus on the following four questions. What plate movement occurs at a conservative plate boundary? What tectonic processes and tectonic activity happen at a conservative plate boundary? What landforms are found at a conservative plate boundary? And what does a diagram of a conservative plate boundary look like? The first focus is on what plate movement occurs at a conservative plate boundary. So here you can see in the diagram that we have got two tectonic plates and they are moving in the same direction but the speed at which they move is slightly different. So two tectonic plates move in different directions at different speeds or it could be at the same direction at different speeds. As they do this, the plates rub past each other causing friction the point where the two plates are moving past, so they're rubbing, and sometimes the plates become locked together and stuck, and the pressure builds up. Eventually, this pressure will be overcome, and the plates will spring or jerk past each other. And as that happens, we get these seismic waves, vibrations or shock waves, that go outwards from the point where the plate is jerked past each other, and that makes an earthquake and rocks the ground. The tectonic processes and activity that happen at a conservative boundary are tectonic processes is friction and pressure. The plates rub against each other. It's not a smooth movement. And the tectonic activity is earthquakes only, no volcanic activity. So as the two tectonic plates move apart, it is not a smooth movement, so it can cause minor small powered earthquakes. Unlike the other three plate boundaries, conservative plate boundaries do not have any landforms. They only have tectonic activity, and that is earthquakes. Presented here are four diagrams to represent the plate action and tectonic activity that occur at a conservative plate margin. The first diagram has been used earlier in this presentation, and as mentioned then, you can see that the plates as shown by the arrows, are moving in the same direction. However, the plates are moving at slightly different speeds. The North American plate, one centimetre a year. The Pacific plate, six centimetres a year. So because of the difference in speeds of their movement, it appears like the plates are moving in different directions. As they do this, it's not very smooth. Pressure builds up. And from the friction and then an earthquake can be generated as shown by these little dots in the middle. So these kind of shock waves that go around and that's our earthquake. In the second diagram here, we can see that in showing the plate movement, the characteristics of the drawing also show that this is oceanic crust and this is continental crust. Okay, so this plate margin, the San Andreas Fault, which is represented here, so this is the North American passing past the Pacific plate, you have got two different types of crust. So at a conservative plate margin, you can get different combinations of crust. It can be too continental, it can be too oceanic, it can be oceanic and continental. But it's all about the plate movement rather than what crust is um, kind of colliding or moving next to each other. Diagram 3 is kind of a block diagram um, and this has come from the, the foundation book. So we again we've got the North American plate, we've got the Pacific plate, the arrows are showing the movement and along the fault where the two plates are moving past each other okay, we have got little dots labelled called earthquake foci. Now an earthquake focus is the point where the energy is released from when it's built up and that's your point of origin of your earthquake so that's what the little dots are so it's a good point to label on um, other ways you can label it on could be like a little cross along the middle okay and then the fourth diagram it's been taken from the CPG book and you've got two simple diagrams okay so this would be diagram A literally the plates are moving sideways past each other and again our arrows that in this case they're going different directions and then here, we've got plates moving in the same direction at different speeds. 
and that's our B. So just showing that actually the plates can go in the same direction but at different speeds. So four diagrams to talk you through and explain how a, a conservative plate margin forms. Remember you need to be able to draw one in an exam fully labelled. So key things to put on, make sure you've got the arrows I ideally go in the same direction with the speeds that we've got represented here. Okay, name an example, so the Pacific plate, the North American plate. Name what the fault line is called, so it's called the San Andreas fault. And then try and mark on the earthquake foci, such as these little dots, or do it as a, uh, the cross. And then, like on this diagram I had here, for, to represent the shock waves, do like a little dash circle around each other. Okay, a bit like that. And then just make sure you label that as vibrations or earthquakes. So that brings us full circle to our questions that we had at the beginning of the presentation. So you should now have the answers to what plate movement occurs at a conservative plate boundary, what tectonic processes and tectonic activity happen at a conservative plate boundary, what landforms are found at a conservative plate boundary, and what does a diagram of a conservative plate boundary look like? Replay this clip as many times as you need, pause it on the diagram question, practice drawing it. Make sure that you can answer these questions without support, ready for your exam. Good luck!